let us now look at some ways in which we can measure different kinds of pressure in particular we will be looking at static pressure and stagnation pressure so static pressure as you can imagine is the component of pressure that arises because of molecular collisions and in particular we have assumed that the fluids obey the stokes hypothesis which implies that the mechanical pressure and thermodynamic pressure are equal meaning that the pressure is actually the arithmetic mean of the normal pressures or the normal stresses at a point so while a fluid is in motion we can sort of decouple the effect of the moving fluid and only measure the static component in particular if we have a tube like this and if we make an opening in this direction so the flow happens in this direction this particular hole is called as a wall tap and we can attach a tube so this tube can take the form of a manometer or this tube can be eventually connected to a pressure transducer so a pressure transducer is a device which converts pressure into voltage signals and it is rather convenient to convert analog signals into digital signals however in this case it is enough to know that we can connect a wall tap so we know that when fluid is flowing over here the velocity component has a pressure associated with it half rho u square and so this pressure is called as the dynamic pressure And so, if we look at the Bernoulli equation, P plus half rho u square plus rho g z. So this particular term is the dynamic pressure. This pressure is the static pressure, and this combination gives us the this this entire combination gives us the piezometric pressure. so if the fluid flow is happening like this so the pressure over here is reduced so it will lead to an elevation of the manometric fluid so the manometric fluid will look something like this so at this end it is open and it is connected uh, it is not connected to anything so it is open to atmosphere so if we denote this point by 1 if we take this particular line to be the reference line then we can write the hydrostatics equation at points a and b we can write pa is equal to pb where pa is p1 plus rho g so this particular height let me call it as h this particular height let me call it as delta h so rho g h plus rho manometric g delta h And on the other end, P at uh, B is simply P atmosphere. So if we know that the limb of the manometer is something like this, and if we know the height of the manometric fluid from the point of measurement or the center line of the tube, we can essentially determine the P1 component if we know all these other parameters. So with this, we can measure the static pressure. And obviously, a wall tap. is able to be independent of the dynamic pressure because there is no component of velocity in this direction there is no component of velocity in this direction and having no component of velocity means you are implicitly removing that particular dynamic pressure component so there is only a dynamic pressure component in this direction and you are able to measure only the static component in fact with a smart arrangement of the manometer you can actually measure the piezometric pressure directly now this particular single tube can also be replaced so if you have a flow like this so instead of having just a single tube we can actually connect the tube from one end to the other end to measure the difference in the pressures directly we can connect it between these two points this point is 1 this point is 
okay if the pressure at point 1 is higher so the manometric fluid levels will look something like this remember that the size of the manometric tube is kept sufficiently large in order to eliminate any capillary effect the presence of any capillary effects will give rise to spurious changes in height even though there is no explicit change in pressure change in height will be due to capillarity and not due to changes in pressure so the the change in the pressure between these two points can essentially be proved so if you write down the pressures at point a and point b so pa is equal to pb where pa is going to be p1 plus rho g this particular height if i call capital h and the pressure at point b will be p2 plus rho g so if this is h and if this is delta h so this will be h minus delta h plus rho manometric g delta h so with the help of this we can find out directly the difference in the static pressure between the two stations and such kinds of measurements are called as differential pressure measurements while such single measurements are also useful most of the times we are more concerned with the difference in pressure between two points often times in order to smoothen out the small errors that may creep in during the formation of the taps we make not just one tap but we make an entire array of taps so uh, if i draw this as the cross section of the tube then we will make taps at several locations and all these tubes are connected by means of tubes to a same mutual point so they are connected to the same mutual point and from there they are connected to a manometer so this way you are essentially able to find out a much smoother uh, evolution of pressure in case there are some aberrations at other walls we can sort of average out those errors or effects non ideal effects to find out the average pressure now we move on to the discussion of stagnation pressure so when there is a flow in a tube for example i mean first of all it need not be just a flow through a tube it can be an open surface flow it can be anything so it can be a flow it can be an internal flow as shown it can alternately be the an external flow which is unbounded in one direction so there's a there's a way of finding out what the velocity is based on various kinds of measurements so we have seen that static pressures can be measured by wall taps alternately we can put a bent glass tube so a bent glass tube looks something like this and this bent glass tube is called as a pitot tube it is named after henri pitot who used this kind of a glass tube to measure the velocity of water in the river cn in paris so such a kind of a pitot tube contains a small opening at both ends one of the end is open to the atmosphere of course there are multiple variations of this but in this particular simple illustration we consider one end open to the atmosphere and the the tube quickly gets filled with the working fluid so in this case it can be water but at this particular point we encounter what is called as a stagnation velocity that is the velocity becomes zero 
So it's called as a stagnation point. And the important thing about the stagnation point is that in order for it to be a stagnation point, the velocity must isentropically go to zero at this stagnation point. And by Im implying that it isentropically goes to zero, that is it adapt reversibly and adiabatically goes to zero. So if we have a velocity of V over here and a pressure of P over here, it, it goes to a velocity equal to zero in reversibly in a reversible and adiabatic manner. And a reversible and adiabatic process is equivalently an isentropic process. So when equilibrium is attained, the liquid in the pitot tube will be stationary. And with the help of the change in level of fluid in the pitot tube, we would be in a position to find out the velocity at this particular point. So let us write down the Bernoulli equation between the, this point, point 1 and point 2. So P1 plus half rho V1 square is equal to P2 because the velocity at this point is equal to 0. So with the help of this, we can write down P1 minus P2 is equal to half rho V square. Now we need some way of finding out the static pressure at point 1. The pressure at point 2 is going to be the same at this point also, 2 prime, and that pressure is going to be, so P2 is going to be this column of, atmo uh, this column of uh, liquid plus the atmospheric pressure. So it's going to be P atm plus rho g, let me call this H2. Now, based on the discussion in the previous section, we can find out the static pressure at point 1 with the help of a pitot tube, uh, with the help of a static tap. So, we can put a static tap like this and so the liquid would be at a certain height. Say the liquid is at this height. Let us say that this particular height is H1. So, the pressure at point 1 P1 would be equal to P atmosphere plus rho G H1. So using this, we can write down P1 minus P2 equal to rho G H1 minus H2. So this becomes ah, so this there was a small sign mistake over here. Half rho v square is actually p2 minus p1. It's a small oversight on my part. So it's this, p2 minus p1. So p2 minus p1 is going to be rho g h2 minus h1 is equal to half rho v square. And this gives us a way of finding out the velocity in terms of the difference in the height between the static tap and the pitot tube. So 2g delta h. So this gives us the velocity in the flow in terms of the height difference. So this particular concept we can use to find out the velocity. In fact, it is even easier for an open channel flow. So if we put a bent tube like this again, so if, if I were to draw this as point 1 and this point as point 2, so the, the pressure at this point, the P1 would become equal to atmospheric pressure. So this would be P atmospheric plus half rho V square. And this P2 will be equal to P atmospheric plus rho G H. Okay. So using this, 